I was completely done with television, man. After the abomination that was season 8 Game of Thrones, I threw my hands up and just said, you know what, I'm done. Watching that train wreck in real time was a surreal experience, I'll just say that. But then something amazing happened. HBO apologized with Chernobyl, and I was reminded that for every Dexter, How I Met Your Mother, and Game of Thrones, every series that has ever ripped their hearts out with an abysmal ending, there is another beautiful peacock of a show just waiting to spread its wings and fly. You gotta let it fly. And then a bombshell dropped yesterday. Warhammer is coming to television in the form of Gregor Eisenhorn and the Demon Hunters of the Inquisition. 40k is coming, and so am I. I'm gonna be honest, I did not expect to see anything like this in my lifetime. From the beginning, I've said most production teams, whether they be from Hollywood or an indie studio, would not want to touch fantasy or 40k with a 10-foot pole for a list of reasons longer than the Book of Grudges. Incredibly expensive to translate to cinema or television, super heavy on the CGI, dense and expansive lore that quite literally covers an entire galaxy and 10,000 years of strife, and no established tendrils in the collective mainstream consciousness of the people they want to watch the damn show. They know 40k fans are gonna want to watch it, but what about everybody else? This has never really been attempted before. How do you introduce three decades worth of grimdark in a single show? How do you get people who don't know anything about the setting excited? I think Inquisitor Eisenhorn is the best answer to that question. His story is much more relatable than anything you'd ever get from the poster boys of the setting. His story combines elements of crime dramas, thrillers, and action movies, and might be the best introduction to 40k from arguably the best author in the Black Library, Dan Abnett himself. The Eisenhorn Omnibus was the first set of 40k novels I ever read. They were my introduction into this universe, and so to see that echoed in their choice of setting makes me feel like right off the bat, they kind of know what they're doing. Could be wrong, Games Workshop has a long and very unfortunate history of handing their IP over to people that don't deserve to be anywhere near it, but at the very least, they have passed that first test. They've got some awesome source material to draw from. So, Games Workshop and Big Light Productions will be working on a live-action 40k series with Frank Spotnitz the executive producer for Man in the High Castle, Medici, and X-Files leading the way. Pretty solid resume there. It's gonna be big budget, and it looks like Dan Abnett is being brought on in some role, likely as a consultant, and that's pretty much the extent of what we know about the show itself. So, let's talk about the man of the hour, Eisenhorn. What he's all about, and how his source material could actually be translated to television. Ya boy is an important figure in the Imperial Inquisition the secret police force of the Master of Mankind. Divided into the Ordo Xenos, Malleus, and Hereticus, they fight an underground shadow war against aliens, demons, and witches that would see the Imperium burn. They are witch hunters from Warhammer Fantasy, essentially. Exact same premise, just on a galactic scale, with a whole hell of a lot more power. So where Space Marines and the Imperial Guard are the boots on the ground, the anvil on which chaos and the military threats of humanity break and break again, the Inquisition is a scalpel surgically removing traitors, mutants, and cultists from the underbelly of society until the threat grows too large. Then, they say screw it and drop the hammer, exterminata style. It is said that heresy is like a tree. Its roots lie in darkness, while its leaves wave in the sun. You can prune away its branches, even cut the tree to the ground but it will grow again, ever stronger. Such is the nature of heresy, and why it is so difficult to destroy. Some may question my right to destroy a world of 10 billion souls, but those who truly understand realize that I have no right to let them live. No sacrifice is too great, no treachery too small. Heretics, bro. Can't live with them. Might as well nuke them. Now, Eisenhorn is one of the most famous examples of an Inquisitor in the 41st millennium. Basically, the bastard, murderous love child of James Bond and Sherlock Holmes rolled into a detective story in galaxy-spanning epic. 
He's an extremely intelligent Imperial sanctioned Psyker, a character constantly pushed to the breaking point by Chaos Fanatics, Terrorists, and Demons from the Warp. And I think one of the most appealing aspects of his character arc is that this dude is constantly walking that thin red line between the good of the Imperium and outright heresy and a fall to Chaos. He is a very flawed character, does unquestionably horrendous things in the name of the Imperium, and is that perfect Shades of Grey protagonist to show that choosing the lesser of two evils is the only reason humanity continues to thrive and exist in the 41st millennium. That struggle between Puritan values and radicalism, calling on chaos to fight chaos, becomes a bigger and bigger theme in the novels until the forces he calls upon threaten to utterly consume him. It gets real dark, real spooky, and has the potential to appeal to a much wider audience than Space Marines ever could, an audience that isn't necessarily invested in 40k lore. Space Marines are, if we're being completely honest, pretty one-dimensional. From a character-driven point of view, a lot of them really aren't very complex. They're very brother, very steel rain, very in-your-face, and badass for sure, and when used purely from an action-driven standpoint with minimal dialogue, they're super cool. But I don't think they're the right choice to introduce mainstream viewers to 40k. They're very hammy and very over-the-top. But there's also barriers with their physical implementation, their size, movement, speed, the armor they wear itself. Many of the elements that make a Space Marine a Space Marine couldn't be replicated naturally without practical effects, which means CGI, which means higher expenses and a chance for things to look really, really bad. Cheap CGI is not a good look. So going for a human-focused crime drama in space makes a lot more sense, especially because Dan Abnett is responsible for fleshing out a lot of what daily life in the Imperium is actually like. It's brutal, and it's bleak, and it's visually striking. And Eisenhorn has a really good cast of supporting characters too. Beckwin, a woman who starts out as a prostitute who grows into an incredibly well-trained and dangerous psychic knoll, a woman Eisenhorn himself falls in love with but can't act on because physical touch between them causes him excruciating pain. Uber Amos, a savant with near-perfect memory and a data addict able to absorb any and all information, and Cherubal, a demon host whose story arc might very well bind the entire television series together. Now, I think the big question right now is, how is this all going to be translated? Is it going to be a direct translation of the first Omnibus and then his subsequent rivalry with Gideon Ravener? Is it going to be straight from the novels to the small screen, or is it just going to take elements from the lore and explore stories that were only really hinted at in the source material? Because you can have the greatest source material in the world, but if you try and twist it and bastardize it so it conforms with mass market appeal, oftentimes you lose what made it special in the first place, and you're not going to have a good time. I think ultimately a lot of it will depend on what network picks it up initially. And I think once we know where it will air, we'll have a much better idea of what to expect from the show going forward. But honestly, I have faith. Against my better judgment, I have faith this could be a legitimately good show. Dark, gritty, intelligent TV shows aren't a complete rarity anymore. The Americans, Chernobyl, Fargo, Westworld, Snowfall, even Game of Thrones before that horrendous final act, all that stuff kind of demonstrates that point. 40k can not only work, it can thrive in an atmosphere that allows shows like that to thrive, where studios are churning out that kind of quality. So honestly, I want them to stick to the source material as closely as possible. Again, with Game of Thrones, we saw what happens when you start to deviate from that somewhat. I think the novels would be an amazing blueprint for a successful show, one that could thrive in this climate and get a lot more people interested in 40k, and possibly open the door for more stuff later down the line. I mean, if TV series like Game of Thrones and The Mandalorian are dropping up to 15 million per episode, in its own way, I think that bodes well for big budget sci-fi dramas going forward. I don't know if it's ever going to translate to a Horus Heresy series or anything quite on that scale. Doing that justice would be probably the most expensive television show ever made, but that's the beauty of the 41st millennium. There's an entire galaxy of stories still waiting to be told. In terms of casting, I wouldn't mind them going for a relatively unheard of actor. Sometimes they come in with the least baggage, and we don't think of them in terms of their other roles, which can be a huge benefit in a role like Eisenhorn's, a blank slate. But if we're talking A-list, top-of-the-line talent, I honestly think Mads Mikkelsen would be perfect for the role. He's got the look, the stern, gruff, joyless personality, the acting chops for sure, and the gravitas to completely and totally immerse me in the setting. 
I think he could sell a Gregor Eisenhorn Inquisitor incredibly well. Top of the list in terms of my casting choices on that front. What does this all mean for the future of Warhammer in cinema and television? Hard to know at this point, still very early in development. So much will depend on how well it's actually executed. If it's done well, the door could open wide to movies, to other television shows, and a massive expansion of the 40k universe. Drop a huge steaming turd, if Eisenhorn sucks ass and is terrible, it might be the one and only shot this decade for 40k. Guess we'll find out soon enough. Hope may be the first step on the road to disappointment, but I am hopeful here, and I'm excited to see what the show is going to be like. And I will be following it with great interest going forward. You can be sure of that. Let me know what you guys think of 40k making its way to big budget television for the first time, and I'll see you all in the next video. Andy Pride, signing out for now. Have a good one, guys.